Hey everyone. <laughs> awesome stuff, man. Right? Yeah. Um, I see a attendee streaming in. That's great. That's great. How is everyone? Can everyone hear me clearly? Right? Um, oh yeah, I haven't shared my screen yet. Uh, I'm going to share my screen now. Screen two. Okay, can, can everyone see my see my screen clearly? Yeah, I can see the chat here. Oh, Sunday, nice to see you. Asani, nice to see you. Bargaf, nice to see you. Awesome stuff, man. Okay, um, it's nice that I can see Zoom has a chat uh, chat ses uh, section where we all can send through messages, right? And see each other's messages, right? Which is pretty cool, pretty cool, right? <laughs> okay, let, let me see, just let me see. Um, are you guys able to see my screen, the Ultimate Forex uh, Trading Masterclass? Are you guys able to see it? Awesome. Yeah, you, you know, you can, you can try to send the messages through in the chat section, right? So we can, uh, you know, just test it out. I, have a, I literally have another screen open here um, just to monitor your questions coming through. So, you know, keep out, keep out the messages coming through, right? I see them. But I'll do my best to respond to them throughout the, uh, throughout the session. Right, and I'd like to welcome everyone. Right, um, I'm not sure if anyone uh, remembers me. Right, <laughs> and remembers me. Right, uh, but yeah, I'd like to welcome you all uh, to this is the ultimate uh, trading ma masterclass. Right, to actually um, to actually take you on a series of lessons. Right, all the way from beginner or, um, to intermediate lessons to advanced lessons. You know, to take your trading to the next level. Right, we're going to cover everything to do with. Um, not only the basics of trading, but also we'll start um, in the later sessions, we'll dive into uh, technical uh, fundamental analysis, right? And all the different things that uh, will help you, how do you put it, right? Take the trading, you know, to the next level, right? I can see you guys raising hands, right? Um, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, I can see you guys raising hands over here. So if you have questions, just send them right through. I'll do my best to get to them, all right? Um, let me see, how do I see who are raising their hands? Who do I see? Oh. Tirupati, yeah. Tirupati and Bunny, you're, you're raising your hands, right? Um, I'm not sure if you guys can send the messages through, but you know, feel free to send it through. I can see them. All right. Now, let's begin today's session. All right. Now, um, thank, thank you for taking the time, guys, to uh, come attend to this session. Right. Let me introduce uh, to you who I am. Right. And of course, the agenda for today. All right. One thing I want to encourage you guys to do is that if you have any questions, send them through. All right, uh, um, I have another screen open here, just monitoring them. Okay, guys. Now, um, introduction, uh, today's session is the introduction to trading. It's the very first session of our trading masterclass, right? Um, I'm your host for today, Desmond Leong, right? So I run a research firm, right? I'm an analyst here at, um, at TakeMill. So um, I've won the finalists for the best FX research 2019, 2020, and 2021, and also uh, 2020 and 2021 for best equity research. Right. So one thing I want to encourage you guys is that you don't need to be 30 years in this business. You know, you don't need to be 30 years in Bloomberg, you know, to be a good trader. All you need to do is 30 days learning the right stuff. Right. 30 days focusing on on learning the right things, because there's a thing with Forex. You know, there's a thing with trading It's it's not like trading is not like um, trading is not like studying. You know, trading is not like it's not like when you go to school you will have the right syllabus to learn, right? You learn it and you go for an exam, you know, as long as you apply what you learn, you will get it correct, right? In the world of trading, the dangerous thing is that you can learn the right stuff and you can learn the wrong stuff. You can spend months learning, learning, reading stuff on baby tips or whatever you call it, right? You spend all the time learning there and realize that you're learning the wrong stuff, right? And it can actually be detrimental to your trading. Right, so when it comes to uh, trading, what I want to emphasize is to exercise discretion, right? Exercise discretion, um, try to learn from recognized sources, right? For example, Tickmill, right? Uh, you know, they are uh, one of the biggest in the space, right? And you know, the, we analysts, we know our stuff and we, we actually been through our fair share of learning the wrong stuff, applying the wrong stuff, right? Uh, blowing up our accounts, right? And from that, from the experience, that's where I try to I'll share with you guys why um, I help you shorten that learning curve to be a better trader. Okay, so yes, um, remember, you know, the worst things to do in life is to run is to run full speed in the wrong direction. Okay, so remember when your pursuit of knowledge, don't just run full speed, run full speed in the right direction. 
Okay, so very important thing to consider there, right? I see some Q and A. Um, I see Bunny sending a question in. How do I begin a forex trading career and profit from it? Are there tutorial sessions for a new beginner? Yes. Um, this session is um the forex trading masterclass is to take you from beginner to advanced, right? I will share with you some useful resources um for you to go through, including some of um our um other analysts we have here at Technu who write some pretty good articles. I think Patrick's one of them who come up really really good strategies. You should go check it out. I'll share a little bit more with you towards the um later on. But for today, let's focus on today's session. What we're going to cover for today, okay? What we're going to cover for today, right? What um this is the agenda for today. A few things to take note. I'm just going to take up my handy dandy pen over here, right? So we're going to touch on really quickly what is forex, right? Uh, what is forex and how does it work? Okay. Later on, later on, I'll be showing you, you know, trading jargons. You know how to kind of filter through the noise, right? I, I like to keep things really simple, right? Uh, I don't have a Twitter handle, but you can find me on uh, Instagram, Comfy Desmond, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, you can find, find me there if you want, right? Uh, I'll, I'll send the link later through, right? But trading jargons, you know, how to filter through the noise, okay? Because, you know, sometimes in, in the world of trading, you know, people like to use a lot of those jargons, right? What's hockey, what's dovish, uh, dovish, what's risk on, risk off, you know, safe haven has assets, right? Sometimes it it overcomplicates the simple stuff, right? Overcomplicates the simple stuff, right? So I'm going to kind of break down the trading jargons for you. If you have additional jargons which you're not too familiar about, just send them through. I will, I will try my best to explain them, right? Um, how much time do you need to trade, right? So that is a common question that I have. You know, how much time do you need to trade? Do you, do you need one hour, two hours, 30 minutes, four hours to be a profitable trader, right? Do you need to, um, uh, what time frame should you look at? M15, 15, 15 minute chart, 30 minute chart, one hour chart. What kind of um, you know, what kind of chart time frame should you look at? Right. So these are important questions which um, I will answer later, especially when you're thinking about starting a journey in trading. It's important to consider, right? It's important to consider the amount of time you want to commit to trading, the amount of time you can commit to trading, right? So it's not only just how much time you want, but how much time you can commit. So if you're working a full-time job, you have a little bit of time after work, you know, to dedicate to trading, maybe one to two hours a day, you need to pick a strategy that allows you to, um, to, to trade during that one to two hours, right? You can't possibly be scalping where you need to monitor the markets like four to five hours a day, right? You kind of may, maybe you want to take a day trading approach, right? If you've got a couple of hours in the, in the morning, afternoon, and night, there's a certain strategy you can pick, right? And I'll be sharing with you a couple of ideas later, right? Um, Sarki, I can see that you are uh, on, on goal. So I think everyone can see the question by Sarki uh, that is currently running losses on XAU USD, which is gold. Right? Will there be a reversal? Should I close the trade now? This is an important question we ask because when you ask such questions, the context right, is your trade on the one minute chart. It's a trade on five minutes. Is it going to reverse in the next five minutes? Is it going to reverse in the next one hour? Very different things that you need to consider. Right, how much is your margin currently? How, how long can you hold the trade? If I tell you the trade can is going to reverse in the next three days, are you able to hold the trade? Yeah, you know, you need to check your emotions properly as well, right? So, Sarki, right, I can't answer you that question now. We do have live trading sessions which you can tune in, uh, and I'll be showing you uh, towards the end of this session how we actually have VIP rooms, right? Pretty cool stuff, right? VIP rooms, um, that will be rolling out in the next couple of weeks or maybe. Um, probably this end of this month or, or next month, right? A VIP trading rooms uh, where you can actually ask these questions and me, Patrick, the other analysts that we have at TickMill, we can jump in and help you with it, right? But asking this question by itself, it's not going to help you much. If I tell you that it's going to reverse now, how is it going to help you, right? Um, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, like, I like that uh, saying, my fan, right? That the market can stay irrational longer than it can stay liquid, right? And that is exactly true. Right, so it's you, you that trade that you are in, Sarki, you should have a stop loss in place. And I think it's in our second or third session. Um, I can't remember which one, but we will have we'll break down the anatomy of a trade. When to put where do you exactly put your stop loss? Right. A lot of people focus on putting an entry, but they don't focus enough on putting a stop loss and take profit. Right. After they put the entry and and you know the the, the next thing you think about, all right, you know, baby pips tells me to put a 100 pips stop loss or 100 pips take profit, right? It's almost like a, it's a second thought, right? It's an afterthought, you know, where it's stop loss and take profit placement. But if you have ever experienced times where the market just stopped you out, 
and reverse in the direction that of your original trade. This is something that is where you need to actually learn about stop loss placement. It's an advanced trade management approach, but there's a way to avoid, uh, avoid getting stopped out. And we'll cover it in our series. I'm not sure if it's today, but we will cover it. Okay. Now, guys, uh, without digressing too much, <laughs> without digressing too much, um, I, we're going to touch on you know, fundamentals versus technical analysis. Um, if any of you guys are pro fundamentals or pro or technicals, let me know in the chat section. Right, it'd be great to see you guys. Uh, but, um, it's great to know what approaches you guys use. Right, the different products you can trade at Tick Mill. Right, so you know, certain products you might, uh, depending on the time you have to trade, depending on the place you live, right, the uh, at what time of the day you can trade, you know, there are certain markets that you can focus a little bit more on. Right, but remember, you are in trading to make money. You don't trade for the sake of trading. So a lot of people just trade for the sake of trading. They trade Bitcoin because you know Bitcoin is exciting. They trade gold because gold is exciting. But let me tell you, if I can trade toilet paper and make money, I would do that. Don't lose focus on you know the purpose of trading. You trade for uh, to make money. Don't just trade for the sake of trading. That's gambling. All right, guys. Nice to know you're pro technical, Tamitopi. I hope I pronounced your name correctly, All right? And Lastly, equipping yourself. So I'll be, um, towards the end of the session, I'll be showing you different ways you can equip yourself to be a better trader. It's fun stuff, right? Some stuff that Tickmill has, some of the stuff that Tickmill will have pretty soon. And we're dedicated to really take you, take your trading to the next level. Okay? Now, without further ado, let's begin today's session. All right? I, I really want to just touch really quickly on what is Forex. Sometimes, sometimes we overcomplicate it. Right. Sometimes you overcomplicate it. We see, we see stuff like the, you know, we see the bid, right? We see the ask, we see the spread, right? We see, we see all these different things, right? Um, uh, yeah, but I do my best. Do that, all right. So yeah, so the bid ask spread, you know, we, we got all these different things, right? But at the core of it, forex stand for foreign exchange. It's essentially the changing of money. Okay, it's essentially the changing of money. That's in the simplest terms. So that's what Forex is about. It is changing of money. Now, everyone wants to do two things. Okay, let's just say, right? Let's just say we have, um, so okay, we got Charlie from Philippines, you know, we got uh, made a Philippine peso, right? Or maybe, you know, um, if you have, if you're holding onto the United States dollar, uh, USD, right, guys, you're holding onto USD and you realize that you know, you're, 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 you're watching the news. Uh, you're watching the news and you're thinking, oh man, right? It, it's, it looks like USD is, you know, the, you, the economy uh, is in the United States is going to weaken, right? And you start to worry that the USD, the, your value of your USD will drop, correct? You start to worry about that. What can you do, right? You can't just take the USD and say, okay, I, I want to, you know, I want to get rid of my USD. You know, you go to a money changer, right? You go to one of these money changers and like, I, I want to get rid of my USD, right? And he, and he goes like, okay, you want to get rid of your USD? You know, this is maybe the USD you have and you want to pass it to him. You want to pass it to him. The next thing he's going to ask you is like, okay, so what do you want in return of this USD? Right? And, he, and you're thinking, what do you mean what I do I want in return? I just want to, you know, I think the USD is going to weaken, so I want to get rid of it. Then it's like, okay, you want to get rid of it. What about if I give you, um, if I give you Australian dollars, right? And then, you know, at the, at the back of your mind, you're thinking, oh, but isn't Australian dollars, you know, isn't the Australian economy not doing well? You know, don't, isn't it going to weaken too, right? Then he's like, okay, so you don't want Australian dollars. So what do you want, right? Do you want maybe the Japanese yen? Right. And then you start thinking, oh, but in Japan, you know, they're they having this COVID chaos, right? And, and the economy is not picking up. Right. So, he, so you know, you, you, you start to realize that it's not only about what currency you think is going to weaken, but you want to exchange that currency for something that is going to strengthen. Right. So, you, you know, call your friend and like, say, hey, you know, which, which country is doing great now? Right. And say, oh, yeah, you know, um, what about the euro? the euro is picking up, right? I mean, you know, we got soccer matches back in full swing, you know, got Freedom Day, 
right? The economy is starting to pick up again. Maybe you should consider um, uh, that the euro is likely to strengthen. So at a very, very basic level, that is what you're doing. You're passing the USD to a guy and, and you're asking for current, a currency in return that is going to strengthen, right? You want to buy what is strengthening and you have to get rid of what is weakening. That is foreign exchange at the core of it. Okay, at the core of it, that is, that is what Forex is about. You want to get more of the strong stuff and you want to get rid of the weak stuff. Okay, now let's just say we have an example over here, right? You're on holiday. Let's just talk about the dollar and the yen. Okay, you go, you know, you, you have, let's just say you have, um, you, you have 100 USD, right? And you're like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to Japan. Right, I'm going to Japan, I'm going to get some sushi, right? I'm going to get some sashimi. I'm going to enjoy myself over there, right? And I am uh, you know, going on holiday there. Now that you know the uh, the lanes, you know, the the uh, we are allowed to fly and visit each other, right? So you have a hundred dollars, right? You change it into Japanese yen. One USD got you 100 yen. Okay, now after the holiday, after the holiday, right, you come back. All right, after you had a great time in Japan. Right, and you come back to the um, you come back to the United States, right? And you realize that the exchange rate, instead of one USD is hundred yen, right? One USD is now worth hundred and ten yen. Okay, you are holding on to yen, right? You're holding on to the yen. Did you make or do you lose money? How many of you guys know? One, take a guess, right? You're holding on to yen. Right when you come back from your holiday, right? One USD is now worth 110 yen. Did you make or do you lose money? I'm seeing a. <laughs> I guess it's the thing about Zoom, right? You you get to see each other's answers. <laughs> I got some people say make, some people say lose. Okay. All right, just let you answer a little bit more. Agnes, we'll, we'll get to that later, okay? So, now we need to look at it from here. One USD is worth 100 yen. Now one USD is worth 110 yen. Okay, so clearly the US dollar strengthened. Okay, the US dollar strengthened against the yen. So the yen has weakened. Now that would have been great if you, because um, if you were holding US dollars, right? That would be great because your US dollar strengthened, right? Previously, one USD could only get you 100 yen. Now it can get you 110 yen. That is great. However, you were holding on to yen. You were not holding on to USD because you were, you know, this is the leftover yen, Japanese yen that you had, um, you know, after you're done with all your shopping, right? And now you need to convert it back. So it's because the yen has weakened and the USD has strengthened, you have actually lost money. Right. If you're holding on to USD, that'd be great. You know, you have made money, but because you're holding on to yen, you have lost money. All right. So, so this by itself, you know, you, you get to understand the concept of just you know the US, um, how the the money you're holding, right, the currency you're holding, right, and whether USD strengthens or the yen weakens, you know, how it affects, you know, how it affects the value that you have, whether you really made money or lost money. So it just happens that you know, if you didn't exchange your currency, you know, didn't go on holiday, right? And you just delayed your holiday maybe by a week, right? Yeah, you have made money, right? So, so this is, you know, this is the concept of foreign exchange, right? It, it actually happens a lot more in our day-to-day -day life. So, you know, when the, whether you guys are going, you're thinking of going on a holiday, right? Uh, and when you do go on a holiday and, you know, when you go back and you, and you look at a money changer and you look at the rates that you have, then you realize that Forex, that is what Forex is all about. Right, that is what forex is all about. You know, it's it's in our day-to-day -day life, so it's not so abstract. Right. All right, Rajesh, nice to see you, Ravin. Nice to see you guys from India. 
Awesome stuff, man. Now, let me go on to the next thing. Let's let's talk about, now that, now that you have a basic understanding of Forex, you know, how it's so simple our day-to-day lives, I do want to um, touch on something really important, right? Which is the jargons. If there are jargons which you are unfamiliar with, right? Please send it through, all right? I'll do my best to get to them, all right? But these are some of the jargons which I want to touch on today, right? These are the jargons I want to touch on. The first thing, the first jargon is pips, right? Every time you see someone, uh, is, you know, when you go on baby pips, you go, yeah, baby pips, right? You got Forex factory, right? You go to those forums out there. Someone will ask you, you know, hey, how many pips do you make on the trade? Do you make 10 pips? Do you make 20 pips? Right? What does it mean? Pips basically means it refers to the smallest movement uh, percentage in points, PIP, right? Now, what, what the heck does that mean, right? <laughs> so let's just say, you know, you got a currency, like just say, um, any slash USD pair, okay, right? You have the, if zero is the fourth decimal place, right? So if it goes from 0 0.0001, no, if it increases by, by this, right? It says, it means that it has went up by one pip, okay? One pip. Usually anything with, um, anything that actually doesn't end with a, uh, um, so there's a XXX USD or XXX AUD, anything except slash JPY, all right? It refers to the fourth decimal place. It refers to the fourth decimal place. So it goes up by one pip means that it goes up by, you know, um, if it goes from 0 0.001 to 0 0.002, right? Means that it goes up by one pip. Okay, buy stop, buy limit, sell stop, sell limit. I'll, I'll, I'll get to that in a bit, all right? Okay, guys. But yeah, so that is one pip. But for yen, it's slightly different. For yen, it is the um, this is the second decimal place, All right? So let me just pull up. Um, let me see if I can pull up a chart here for you. Trading view charts. If you can see this chart over here. Uh, sorry. Let just let me um. Maybe I just need to add, just let me add the dot yen. Where's my dollar yen? I just added it inside. Oh, there we go. Okay. So the second decimal place, right? Second decimal place is, sorry, I was looking for the number. The second decimal place here is the, it uh, refers to the PIP. Okay, it's the same thing as like in Euro dollar, right? The fourth decimal place is the PIP, right? So you can see 1.0926 over here. If it goes from 1.0926 to 1.0927, that means it increases by one PIP, okay? See, now it's, now it's a 1.0927. That means it has increased by one PIP. Right. Um, Marielle, that's a good question. We, we might actually, right? But I'll need to go through the um, Technos sales and marketing team to confirm that we might, if you attend everything, right? Uh, <laughs> if you attend everything, right? So please lock the attendance for everything because Mar Marielle was asking if you provide e-certificates for this webinar, okay? But without digressing too much, right? That is the meaning of, 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 um, of a PIP. Long or short? Long means you, 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 know, you expect um, prices to go up. Short means you expect prices to go down. So when long means that you're buying, short means you're selling, right? So don't get confused when someone say that. Okay, hawkish and dovish, right? Um, I mean it's a lot to do more to more to do with fundamentals, but basically those who support high rates are hawks, right? Those who like the high interest rates, right? Dovish people are those who favor low interest rates. Okay, I won't dive too much into that because all that is on fundamental analysis. We'll look at it uh, in the future, right? Now, lot size. When someone asks what's your lot size, right, is, is what you see on MT4, okay? Whenever you trade, you know, you can pick 0 0.01 lots, you know, you can pick, uh, you know, you can trade one lot, right? That, that, that lot size refers to um, the, the volume which you're trading, okay? Now, let, let, let's have some questions here, all right? Who can name me a minor uh, currency pair? Majors are, majors are pretty, uh, are pretty, um, majors are pretty straightforward. But who can guess what's a 
Who can guess what's a minor? What's a minor currency pair? Anyone got any examples? GBP INR is an exotic currency pair, right? Um, hey, Liam. Yeah, it's nice to see you here, <laughs> right? Uh, Kiwi, um, Kiwi, yeah, if uh, NZD slash AUD, yes. If it's NZD slash USD, Kiwi dollar or Aussie dollar, it is uh, major. Aussie Frank is correct, right? Frank, right? Um, Jason, URUSD is a uh, major. Anything that ends, right? So, so majors are like Aussie dollar, Euro dollar, pound dollar, right? Um, the, the major currency pairs with a slash USD behind. Uh, miners are usually the, the crosses, like pound yen, that's correct. Pound yen, kiwi yen, euro kiwi, that's correct. Canaan, I can see you say franc, right? But you need to put two currencies together, right? To decide whether it's a, you know, it's a major or minor, right? If it's dollar franc, USD slash CFF, CHF, that's a major, right? But if it's CHF slash JPY, that's a minor, right? Aussie yen. So the, the difference, right, is someone, you know, sometimes people say, hey, yeah, I only trade majors, right? Then... You might be wondering, you know, what the heck is he saying? You know, he's only trading majors, right? It means that he only trade major currency pairs, right? Major currency pairs, as the name suggests, they are a little bit, they're a lot more liquid, right? There's a, there's a lot more people trading them. Miners are like the crosses, like yeah, the Aussie yen, pound yen, right? Euro kiwi, right? Aussie franc. Those are slightly less popular, so there's less liquidity there. Right? Those are that, that's what I mean of miners, exotic currency pairs. The, the the um dollar INR, uh dollar Philippine peso, right? Um even SGD, some people even consider the Singapore dollar as like a um a little bit of a emerging or exotic currency pair, right? We got the we got um the the China yuan, right? That's also considered an exotic currency pair, right? So those are uh, you know, those are what we call emerging exotic kind of currency pairs. Okay, so it's important to know, you know, when people are mentioning them, you roughly get an idea what they're referring to. Okay, then we have the Tokyo, London, and New York sessions. These are the main trading sessions in the day. The, the, the day kind of starts actually with Australia opening, right? But a lot of people like to refer to it, um, the, one of the major um, sessions as Tokyo. Okay, because that's where a lot of volume comes through. Then we go to London, right? And then we go to the New York session. I'll be showing you how they all line up together later to have a 24 hours um, that, um, to contribute to the forex market being 24 hours, uh, 24 hour kind of session. Okay. Now, so bullish means that we expect prices to go up. Bearish means we expect prices to go down. So now, especially with the um, war that is going on, you know, there's a lot of talk on safe haven. Safe haven. What in the world is safe haven? Right. Safe haven, basically, as the name suggests, is a safe place where people can run to. Right, so sometimes you might hear it in the news. That's right, Rajesh. Right, so gold is a safe haven because if the world world goes to chaos, right, what holds its value is gold. Right, safe haven currency pairs. Who want to make any guesses? What are some of the popular safe haven currencies out there? Right, it's not only the U.S. dollar. What other guesses can you make for um, safe haven currencies? Frank, uh, not bad. Crypto, maybe. <laughs> crypto, yeah, there, there's an argument that crypto can be a safe haven. We got yen, yen, yen. We got silver, silver, not so much. I mean, it's loosely considered safe haven, but not. Euro is also not considered a safe haven. Frank is, right? You can consider Frank. Mark is right in that you can consider yen can be a safe haven, right? Yen is a safe haven. Okay. Um, Swiss, yep. Not cable, not pound, no. Cable actually means GBP USD, right? Temi Topi, right? And we're referring to a specific currency, singular currency here, right? Cable means GBP USD, which means you're referring to a currency pair, which is not a safe haven, okay? Pound is not really a safe haven, right? Uh, <laughs> not sure about food options. The Singapore dollar is actually considered a safe haven, right? The yen is a safe haven, right? Frank is also pretty much the USD. Right, so those are more or less considered safe haven currencies out there. Okay. Um, okay. Um, later I'll show you about different tips. Risk on, risk off. You know what? What? What is risk on? What is risk off? Simply put, 
risk on risk when people are imagine there's a imagine there's a switch there's a risk switch right you can turn it on and you can turn it off when you turn it on it means that everyone is willing to jump into risky stuff right what are the risky stuff like technology stocks right bitcoin crypto equities right fast growth companies there's risk on risk off is when you switch it off right what so what so what are the like for example in the current uh, when, when when there's like a war going on, people are very scared. That's where you turn off the risk switch because risk off. What do you run to? You run to safe havens. You run to gold. You run to dollar. You run to yen. You run to these places that you feel a little bit safer, right? So that so that is the concept of uh, risk on risk off. Okay, being an ask spread, right? Real being an ask spread, being ask prices, right? They basically and, and what it means, right? That's a that's a price where you buy and sell it. Okay, that's an important thing that you need to take note of. Usually on the chart you can see the bid, and you can see the ask price. The ask price is always above the bid price. Okay, now um, who can uh, let's let's go into liquidity first, right? I'm being very wary of time that we need to cover everything, right? So liquidity, all right. So let's talk about liquidity. We have previously we have the majors, we have the minors, and we have the exotic currencies. Which has the least liquidity, right? The least amount of liquidity, major, minor, or exotic. All right, you got Rajesh saying minor, Bargav saying exotic, you got Aaron saying exotic, exotic, Marielle saying major. Okay, you got quite a number of different answers coming in here, right? Um, okay, it is exotic. So liquidity. So um, that's a good point, Bunny. What is liquidity, right? <laughs> it's okay. We're all here to learn, all right? We're all here to learn. So what exactly is liquidity? Liquidity, you can imagine, is um, let me think of a way to explain liquidity. The amount of buyers and sellers in the market. Okay, let's just say you have an iPhone. You have an iPhone 12, right? One of the latest ones. Right, and you have a Nokia 8210, right? An old Nokia. And you try to sell both of them on eBay. Which one do you think you're able to sell faster? The latest iPhone or the Nokia? One of the old Nokia phones out there. Which one would be easier to sell? <laughs> Agnes, that's an interesting answer. <laughs> Why are you guys answering Nokia? I, maybe my example is terrible. Or something. You guys are like nostalgic fans of Nokia. Right? But yes, it's, it's the iPhone. The iPhone is easier to sell. Not even Android. Android is not even a choice there, guys. Right? The iPhone will be the easiest one to sell. Okay? There are a lot more buyers and sellers in the market now. No one, uh, Almost no one owns a Nokia. Right? Yeah, it's the same thing, right? If you so 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 interestingly, I I have a um, I have I, I bought it. I have a twenty fifteen iPad in the past. I just got the I just got a new iPad, right? I just got a new iPad, right? And I was like, all right, I just got a new iPad, uh, iPad Air, right? And and I want to now sell my old iPad, right? So I go I go to market. And uh, we had this secondhand place in Singapore called Carousel, right? We're selling them, right? And I put my 2015 iPad up there. And I just do a quick search. Like, what is the, uh, what are other people selling it at? I bought it about close to a thousand in the past. At current rate, interestingly, the iPad Pro that I can sell it is about 650, right? You notice that I'm not losing much between what I bought it at and what it is now because the amount of liquidity, how popular it is iPad, you know, iPhone, right? Because it's so popular, there are always buyers and sellers, right? Versus I have an old, I have an old sell me, <laughs> sell me phone that I bought from uh, about, I think it was about three or four years ago. I bought it close to $500. I'm trying to sell it now. I can't even sell it for $50, right? Hardly anyone wants it. So that's liquidity, right? So, it, you know, you want to trade things that are more liquid. Because it's easier to find buyers and sellers, right? There's a, usually a tighter spread between the buy and the ask, right? So you look at euro dollars, the spread can be like 0 0.01 pip, right? Or maybe even 0 0.00 pips, 
But if you look at the exotic currency, I wonder, uh, maybe we can find it on Tick Mill's website, right? Um, we, we could find it, right? Let's just see if I have it over here. Spreads, oh yeah, Forex. Could be here. Let's see if it's over here. Yeah. So you notice the majors, see, this is a major, the spread is very low. This is a major, the spread is very low, right? This is a major, the spread is very low. The miners, for example, pound Aussie, you have a higher spread, 2.5, right? Uh, pound yen is, um, pound yen is not, um, is, is, is a cross, right? It's, uh, it's, it's not a major. The spread is one pip, almost 10 times more than dollar yen, which is a major, right? Dollar yen, 0 0.1, you trade pound yen, right, is one, right? So, so, so there's a difference, right? The, the majors have better spreads. The lower the spread, the better, right? The lower the spread, the better, okay? Important things to take note of. And the last thing with slippage, right? Slippage actually, um, sometimes you, you see people in, um, in forums saying, oh, I got slipped, man, right? They, I got terrible slippage, right? What does, it, what does it mean? Slippage basically means, imagine, right? You're trying to grab onto something, um, Let's just say you have this, you, you have this a uh, metal rod, okay? You have this long, long, you got this long, long metal rod, okay? That's like from here, it goes one long metal rod, okay? If you held onto it, you know, I ask you to hold onto this position over here. It's easy. You can hold onto it with your hand, correct? Because it's a metal rod. But if I suddenly dip this metal rod into oil, imagine I put it into oil. Okay, I put it in the oil, and then I ask you to, you know, I, I I drop the metal rod so it's from the top and it's going down, right? The metal rod is from the top and it's going down, and I ask you to grip it with both hands or grip it with a single hand, right? And I try to ask you to try to grip it uh, right in the middle, because it now has oil. When you try to grip it, right, it, it suddenly starts to slip, right? Until maybe you can muster up enough strength that if if you're able to maybe muster enough strength until the part where it's not so oily, right? You might be able to finally stop it over here. Okay, slippage. Slippage just basically means how much it slips from the moment you try to grab it, right? So it's like a trade. You want to close off the trade. Imagine the, the, the market is going like crazy, right? Uh, stuff like non-farm payroll, big news events, right? Markets are going like crazy and try to get out of a trade, right? When you try to get out of a trade, you can imagine that things are like this metal rod, you know? Things are going crazy. It's dropping very, very fast, right? It's going down fast. It's going up fast, and you try to grip it, right? You're bound to slip, right? So that's what slippage means. It can be a good thing. It might be positive slippage or negative slippage. Positive slippage basically means that it worked out nicely in your favor, right? Let's just say you wanted to get out, for example, right? Let's just use this line over here, right? You you were price was you know, price is going up very fast like that, okay? Positive slippage means maybe um, you bought over here. This is where you bought, right? Price is going up very fast. You try to close out over here. This price, you try to close out, right? You're like, okay, I made enough money. I close out. But because, because the market was moving too fast, it was going up too fast, right? In this case, it was going up too fast, right? And instead of getting out over here, which would have made you maybe $100, right? You got out over here, which made you $200. Now, is that a good thing? Yeah, it's a great thing. <laughs> it's a great thing, but that's positive slippage. So you'll be like, oh man, that is awesome. Slippage is great, right? <laughs> but if it was the other way around, if you had sold over here, right? And you tried to get out over here to lose $100 to close out your, your uh, loss at $100 and you get slipped to negative $200, you'll be cursing your luck and be like, crap. You know, that is terrible. <laughs> yeah, it happens, you know. It, and, and that's the thing with slippage. It can be a good thing, it can be a bad thing. You can get positive slippage, you can get negative slippage. Okay? Now, but the thing to know here is that to reduce slippage, firstly, you want, you want to try to, when you're trying to trade around huge volatile news events, that is usually when slippage occurs because the markets are moving too fast. You know, it's like, it's like if you, if you're, if this, if this was a rod, right, and it was just like, you know, I just put it stationary over there. If the market is not moving, 
right? I put it on the table and I ask you to grip the middle. No problem, right? We can just like grab it over here. No problem. But if it's going fast and I try, ask you to try to grab it, there's a chance that you won't even be able to catch it properly because it's moving too fast, right? And that's the thing. When the market is moving fast, that's where slippage occurs. That's the first thing. When the market is moving fast in, in emerging markets, in exotic currencies, right? In this kind of markets that are less traded, that's where more slippage happens. And of course, lastly, it depends on the broker. For example, um, Tickmill, it depends on your connection, right? If you are trading, um, if you are maybe going for a hike in, um, in New Zealand, right? You are in the woods, right? You're sitting down by the river, right? You're trying to fish for some salmon. There is no internet connection or very terrible internet connection and you're trying to trade. Yeah, you know, your internet connection sucks, right? You're going to have, and you try to trade, right? You're going to have a lot of slippage because your, you know, your internet connection is not good, okay? So that's when slippage occurs, right? You can use starting. I'm not sure what the heck starting is, right? But yeah, you know, that, that is one way where slippage can occur. So firstly, it depends on your internet connection. Secondly, it depends on your broker, you know, wh how, whether, how good their connection is. Right. Usually for, uh, for example, for Tickmill, they have ECN accounts, or STP accounts, right? Their connection is very good. It goes through very fast, right? So that's how you can have less um, slippage, okay? But for if, when you guys connect MT4, just look at the bottom corner of the screen, right? Um, there's this little bar thing that lights up. It can show you your connection quality, right? How many milliseconds that, um, is the, uh, do you have? Um, that, that, that actually leads to slippage. Okay. Yes, slippage can occur on an ECN account. Slippage can occur on any account. Okay. So there are a lot of factors that that, that happens. But remember, slippage is usually usually is both sides. You know, sometimes you get good ones. Sometimes you don't get good ones. Sometimes you made the you know if you got in on this side and you from hundred dollars you made the two hundred dollars is great, right? If you sold and you lose hundred and you lost two hundred in the state, that's bad, right? But you know it kind of evens out over time. You know you get positive and get negative slippage. All right, that's an important thing to take note of, okay? Um, yeah, and, uh, a lot of people, yeah, a lot of traders that blame brokers for slippages, which is not the case, right? Because honestly, slippage happens to everyone, right? E everyone can get slippage. So, so yeah, you know, it's, it, it's, it's just that our human nature, you know, we just like to complain when something bad happens, right? So, yeah, that, that's, that's the problem, okay? Now, let's go to, you know, Forex opening hours, right? The first market that opens in the day is actually Sydney, right? So how is it? How is the Forex market open? 24 hours, five days a week. Then you notice that um, Tokyo opens. Right before Tokyo closes, London opens, right? And then, of course, there is this thing here called the US London overlap. This part over here, right, where there's a lot of trading going on, right? There's a decent amount of trading here, Tokyo and London too, right? But a lot of trading happens in the and the US London overlap. Now you're going to see this calendar out there. You're going to think that, wow, you know, I can only trade during the US London overlap, but that is not true. Okay, that is not true. There's a lot of volume over there, but that does not mean that you can only trade during this period of time. There's the most volume, the market might move the most, but that does not mean that it's the only time you can trade. Okay, I can tell you, all right? I live in Singapore, right? I live in Singapore. Right, the US London overlap is you know is is towards my evenings, maybe nine or ten p.m. I can trade entirely profitably without even looking at the US London overlap. It depends on your trading strategy, right? So don't get fooled into thinking the best trading uh, just because my I'm not able to trade the US London overlap, I'm not able to make money. That's where the most volume occurs, but that does not mean that that is the only place the trading. Um, your um, the trading opportunity lies okay so don't let your trading um, how much time you have the time you can trade in a day and just because it does not land in the US uh, London overlap does not mean that it's a bad thing okay um, I guess uh, I can see a question why are Asians going in Forex there are a lot of Asians who are bad in Forex <laughs> okay so there's no saying that Asians are going in Forex right but the people who put in the time and effort to learn, that's where they'll be the good ones in Forex, okay? It is not by race, right? It's not by religion, right? It is really the people who put in the right amount of effort to learn, 
that are good traders. Okay. I've known an equal amount of people who are bad at forex for Asians. Okay. <laughs> um, yes, it is, it, uh, Eolin. It is. Maybe there is less, like, like uh, there's less liquidity, less movement, but it is open. Now, let's go talk, on, talk about something really important. How much time do you need to trade? Can you guys share with me? How many of you guys are scalpers, day traders, swing traders, and position traders? Right? We have different approaches here. What are you guys? You know, what, what kind of trading style do you gravitate towards? I would like to kind of get a gauge. Can you guys let me know? All right, we've got scalpers, right? Rizwan's a scalper, right? Um, Aaron trades anything 15 minutes a day after a week, right? Uh, Tamitopi is scalping. Alex is a day trader. Um, Johnny is a swing trader. Liam Day, depending on the news, day trader by Phoebe. Right, all right. Scalper by Monawa. All right, day trader, 15 minute chart. Hey, you got 15 minute chart patterns, you're probably a day trader. Yep. Day trading, day trading. All right. Okay. Now, let me debunk a popular myth. You can be profitable. You can be a profitable trader, even if you're a scalper, you're a swing trader, you're a day trader, position trader. However, you must pick the trading style that suits you. Okay. You must pick the trading style that suits you. Okay. For example, I'm not a swing trader. What's a swing trader? Okay. What's a swing swing trader? Um, swing traders are people who hold trades of, or overnight. Anything beyond one day is a swing trader. Am I a good swing trader? I'm a terrible swing trader. Right? Because I wake up in the middle of the night and it's amazing. I'll be sleeping. Right. I just wake up in the middle of the night and I have to check my phone. And you know, I'll be like, Shut. Did I make money? You know, did I, did I, did I get did I like get stopped out? Did I hit my take profit? Right? I'll have dreams. I have dreams of whether I hit my take profit. And I'll wake up and be like, oh man, that was all a dream. Right? And it's because my psychology, my risk tolerance level is not able to um to be a good swing trader. What I'm good at, I'm good at scalping, I'm good at day trading, right? I'm good at scalping, I'm good at day trading, and good getting in and getting out. But once I sleep, I don't want to think about trading, right? So your trading psychology, your risk tolerance level also affects whether you can be a scalper, day trader, uh, you know, or swing trader. If you easily panic and you tend to revenge trade, scalping is the worst. Scalping, uh, scalping is like going, you know, going head on in the market, you know, jabbing in, you know, you, you jab, jab, jab. And, you know, if you... If you let your emotions get the better of you, the market will knock you out, right? You're like, oh, shucks, I lost money. And then you start trying, you know, trying to get back in the market, right? You can, in the heat of the moment, you can lose your entire account, right? Yeah, so, you know, so for example, an alien, you, know, you can't think, you know, uh, you keep thinking about a trade, if you, you know, and you can't sleep, then you can't do swing trading. That's the truth, right? So pick the trading style that suits you. And also the amount of time that it takes to trade, it matters, right? So let me just break it down, right? If you have just one or two hours a day to trade, if you can trade in the morning and maybe in the afternoon and evening, just a little bit of time that the majority of people can kind of look at the charts a little bit in the morning, a little bit at night, uh, maybe just take a glance at it throughout the day, you can be a day trader, okay? You can be a day trader. In the morning, you just look at the charts, right? And then you put your position. It takes about half an hour, put your positions, right? And then let the market work itself out. You can be a scalper. You can be a scalper if you have slightly more time. So I would say if you're anywhere close to maybe three plus hours a day, right? You can consider scalping, right? You need to look and monitor the market as it moves pretty fast. Day trader, you know, you have probably one to two hours a day, not too much, not too much. Swing trading, you might have less than one hour a day, right? A little bit of time in the day, you know, you can't really look at the markets, monitor it too much, and your, your risk tolerance level is okay, right? You can put a trade, uh, usually, usually um, on the H4 time frame. Swing trading usually works on the H4 time frame and D1 time frame. Okay, day trading usually occurs on the M30 time frame and the H1 time frame. Okay, scalping usually happens on the M5 time frame all the way to M15 time frame. Occasionally, you can even go up to M30, get in and out fast. Position traders look at the daily time frames all the way to the weekly time frames. Okay, so 
depending on the trading style, you need to look at the you need to look at the time the specific time frame. Now, why this is very important is because you don't want, you know, you cannot say that I am a um, I'm a scalper. I'm a scalper and I look at the day one D1 time frame. You're not gonna see anything, right? Because the you know it's 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 too big, it's too high level, right? You need to get in and out fast. Looking at daily time frame won't do you any good. It's the same thing, you know, you might be a day trader, right? You want to get in and out of the position, you want to get in and out of the trade fast uh, within the day. If you look at the one day time frame, right, it's too, you know, it's too insensitive, right? It, it, one barn, one entire barn needs to pass, right, before you can, uh, before, you know, one entire day needs to pass before you see one bar, right? That's why you can't be, you know, if you're a day trader, you, should, you must look at the correct time frame, right? So Rajesh asking, you know, which time frame do you use as a scalper? Right, I usually I usually gravitate towards M30, M30 time frame. Right, the most I will go to is the H1 time frame. Right, but I usually just gravitate towards the M30 time frame. Right, so depending on trading style, analyze the correct things. Don't analyze everything. Right, analyze everything. Yeah, yeah, you know you get analysis paralysis, paralysis analysis. I don't know how to call it, but basically you know you got too much stuff they're analyzing. Okay. This, that's a really important thing to take note of, right? Sometimes a lot of people think that they need to analyze a top-down approach from the, from the weekly to the daily to the four hour to one hour to the, to the 30 minute to the 15 minute to the five minute just to find a trade, but that's not true, okay? That's not true. It's important to kind of look top-down, but, but for example, for if I was scalping on the M5, I would look at M15, then M30. If I was scalping on day trading, I'll look at M30, then jump to H1. Right. If I was a swing trader, I look at H4, I reference the one day chart. Right. So you know, you know, don't don't go crazy. Right. <laughs> don't go crazy. MHD, right? Uh M stands for minute, 15 minute, five minute, 30 minute. H stands for hour, one hour, four hours. D stands for day, one day, usually a one day time frame. W stands for one week. How this looks like, how this looks like is that for example, on trading. You can see you got a H1 time frame, you got a H4 time frame, you got a one day one day time frame, and if I were to show you over here, let me remove this. I'm not sure which one was it. Was it gold? Yeah. So let's just take a look at this over here. On the one hour chart, okay. For on the four hour chart, for example. On the four hour chart, you might not even see this, right? Maybe you zoom in here and like, okay, the market is going up, the market is going up, right? That's a four hour chart. But you don't realize, then you're like, okay, that's a nice little swing high here. But you don't realize that if you go onto the one day chart, this level is not just any level. This level goes all the way back to 20, November, 2021. Price has finally broke out of this level. Right, one, two, three, and it finally broke out the level. Right, if you're on a too small time frame, you won't notice that. Okay, and that's the purpose of higher time frame, just to help you see the bigger picture. But don't go crazy. If you're the M5, don't go all the way to the H4. Okay. Now, um, um, Silhei is asking, right? Silhei is asking, like, um, yeah, Silhei is asking. Which pair should you focus on the master skills? Usually focus on the majors, right? Focus on the important ones, right? Focus on the, um, focus on the, what, what's the word for it? Uh, like the majors, Euro dollar, Aussie dollar, dollar franc, the majors out there, okay? Stay away from the emerging markets, right? Stuff like dollar CNH and stuff, okay? Mono one, I'm going to answer what's the best time frame for scalping. Like I answered previously, you know, um, M5, M15, and maybe M30 time frame. Okay. Now, um, let, let, let me move on to, um, to the other stuff now. Right. Don't digress too much. Let's move on to fundamental versus technical. Which is better, right? And which should you choose? Important thing to take note of. They actually go hand in hand. But um, if... Oh, this, if I remember who is this, is this Mark Henry? I think this is Mark Henry. I can't remember who is this guy over here. <laughs> yeah, but, but yeah, you know, two heavyweights, right? Two heavyweights, putting uh, uh, WWE or something. But as I was saying, 
Yeah, Mark Henry is supposedly the strongest man, right? Nah, that's not John Cena. You can't see John Cena, right? <laughs> John Cena is probably over here, right? You know, you can't see him. Yeah. Now, um, technical versus fundamental, which is better? Which should you choose, right? You should focus on both. However, depending on your trading style, depending on your trading style, there are different ways to focus on them. For example, for example, okay, um, if you were, if you were a long-term trader, okay, if you were holding trades, right, if you're holding trades for a long time, if you're holding trades for a long time, right, maybe you're holding it for months, okay, you're holding trades for months, okay, fundamental analysis is less, is not as strong, right, let's just go look for Forex uh, economic calendar. All right, let's just go to maybe uh, daily FX. Oh, no, let's go to FX Street, uh, FX Street, right? Right, and we have the, you know, we have this economic news calendar, right? Over here, we got UR, harmonized index, blah, blah, whatever returns over here tomorrow, right? Would this result affect your, your three months view on Euro? Unlikely, okay, unlikely. Right, that meant a, um, what matters a lot more, right? What matters a lot more is the outlook of you know the general outlook of the economy, not so much of a single economic news that appears, right? But instead, if you were, right, how how is this going to be important? Like the economic news calendar, the economic news calendar is important if you're trading, right? If you're trading, is like um. If you're a day trader and you're a scalper, that's where the economic news is important, right? For example, if you're scalping, right? If I tell you that, all right, I see a great scalping opportunity, but it's right before the non-farm payroll, then you probably don't want to trade, right? For those of you guys who do not know what's a non-farm payroll, right? It is the first Friday of the month is the biggest news, uh, usually the one of the biggest news event where the markets go crazy, right? It goes up and down like crazy. Let, let, let me show you what, what I mean, right? Let me show you what I mean. Let's talk about, let's go to Euro dollar, okay? Okay. Let me just add, maybe I need to refresh the chart a bit. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, I'm just going to load layout and go load my own layout. I'm going to load euro dollar. Let's just say I load euro dollar and I got the 15 minute chart. Okay, no, I'll go into the maybe I'll go into the five minute chart. Okay, let's go for the non farm payroll. Non farm payroll occurred on was it the first? I think it was the eight. Here, okay, where is it? I, I, I can't find it. Yeah, where else number here? Was it here? Oh, guys, can you guys hear me? Solomon, can you hear me? You guys can hear me, yeah? Okay, just tell you really quickly. For example, for example, right? I can't find the non farm payroll news announcement. Definitely not here. Okay, let, let me just put things in context. See this movement over here, right? If you look at this movement, does this look crazy? Okay. It looks quite scary, right? It looks quite scary. Okay, now let's look at, so if you are scalping, this looks scary, but let's look at it from the one hour chart, right? Let's go back. Where is my, where's that little thing I just circled? Um, I swear I just circled it. Oh, there, there you go. See? This is the same thing I circle on the five minute chart, right? On the one hour chart, it doesn't look scary. <laughs> it doesn't look scary, right? It just looks like, I'm just gonna remove this bar. This bar looks like any other bar out of all the different bars that we have. Not scary at all, okay? 
So you can see if you're scalping, such volatility that occurs during a non-farm payroll, maybe during a huge news event, looks scary if you're on a smaller time frame. But on the bigger time frame, they're like, what the heck is that? That's nothing, right? Something you don't need to worry too much about. Okay, so fundamental analysis, right? So when I'm talking about fundamental analysis over here, it matters, right? So whether whether you're focused on fundamentals or technicals, it it matters depending on the time frame that you pick. All right, so economic news event affects the scalpers and the day traders a lot more. Okay, and it affects the swing traders and the position traders less. Position traders, you know, look for more long-term trading. Um, you know, the economic health of a, of, a, of a country. Those are things that you want to look at, all right? So depending on the trading style, right? Then you pick, uh, then you need to decide whether um, the, like you need to monitor fundamental analysis. You need to monitor the GDP, the unemployment reports, the CPI, the PPI, these kind of uh, numbers that come out, right? So that's an important consideration. You notice that essentially fundamental analysis, right? A good good economy leads to a higher currency value, a bad economy leads to a lower currency value. Okay, very simply, right? I, I just being very wary of time, I don't overrun too much, right? But these are different kind of technical analysis out there. You know, we've got the crosses, which we'll touch on later. We've got the you know harmonics, we've got gun angles, which is actually based on based on stars, astrology or some crazy stuff. But that's why, you know, it looks like you're looking, you're seeing stars a lot more than actually using the stars to trade. So I kind of stay away from them. Right. I'm a big fan of Fibonacci Elliott Wave, right? So I'll be teaching you guys how to do it in the coming sessions. Okay. That is that is definitely fun stuff. Okay. But I want to touch on a few important things, right? Why can you trade it at Tick Mill? Importantly, you can trade Forex, right? Stocks indices, metals, bonds, cryptocurrencies. On top of that, you can also trade futures. Futures is useful for one angle, uh, so a couple of angles, right? Because um, yes, yes, you can trade CFD um, in, in, in Tick Mill, but another thing that you can trade, which very few people know about, right? Is actually you can trade futures. And that's an interesting thing because with futures, you can actually find volume. You can find volume on currencies, right? Because it's traded through a centralized futures exchange. Futures, I will explain it another time, Tammy Toby, right, in another session. But that's an interesting thing with futures, right? You can see legitimate volume, with, especially currencies, right? Um, and a lot, uh, uh, actually, I actually personally, I look at the futures charts when I trade. And sometimes I execute it on the CFDs, but um, it's something which I want to, it, it's a little bit, um, oh, Alex, that's great. That's great if you have futures already. There is a lot of potential in it, right? A lot of people don't know how to harness the true potential of it, but if you do, right, it can give you an edge in the market, right? It will be a little bit too much in cover in today's session. I will touch on it a little bit more in the future, but if you have not, do consider looking at it a little bit. Explore, um, Tick Mill, honestly, is one of the few brokers out there that actually has a, you can trade legit futures on them, right? So, um, I, Rajesh, how does, um, I, I think um, MT4 does not allow you to trade futures, right? But you can trade CFDs. You can trade CFDs. These are these are all CFDs that you can trade on MT4, right? With Tickmill. There are a couple of trading platforms, MT4, MT5. Do check them out, right? Uh, all pretty good at trading, right? Uh, futures, I think, uh, Tickmill has CQG, right? They can, um, uh, they have the platforms that they can use to trade. I need to find it where, uh, where do I find it over here? Is it over here? Wait, just let me find. Let me find it. Let me find it. I can't find it. Uh, I'll share in the next session, right? Uh, yeah, I'll share in the next session. Don't worry too much about it. All right. Now, um, a few uh, last few things I want to touch on, right? Kind of equipping yourself. Now, today is the first session, right? The next session is going to be in two weeks' time, right? Um, I think they do. I think I think they do, Stephen. Right, so uh, indices you can trade. Uh, okay, when you say synthetic indices, um, could you clarify which one you're referring to? Um, for those of you guys um, attending today's session, we are we have a webinar series. Right, is the um, what I encourage you to do is to go to tickmill.com. Let me show you over here. You want to go to this thing called client tools, and you want to go to webinars. Okay, yes, uh, Rajesh, um, CFD on stocks is available. Right. So yeah, webinars right over here. You can sign up for all the upcoming webinars, right? Um, you can see this is the next one. 
um, next one on uh, 25th April, two weeks from now, right? On that one, I'll be touching uh, on technical analysis. Pretty fun stuff. I'm going to send the, I'm going to send the, um, so everyone, I'm going to send the, the link here for you guys to, to join, right? It'll be a, another session, right? Then we have fundamental analysis by my colleague, Cassandra. Then we look at, we, we, we will go on and on and on, right? Maybe from fortnightly to maybe the weekly uh, series, right? But uh, we will be covering more and more advanced stuff along the way. What I do want to tell you is that this recording, yes, it will be available on TickMill's YouTube channel, right? So same thing, go to YouTube, TickMill. I'm going to send you the link over here. This is their channel, right? This is your channel. Send it over, right? Alex, how do you save this link, right? Just copy and paste it <laughs> yourself or something, right? Yeah, go, go sign up, but it will be an entire series that you, that you can sign up for, okay? It's good stuff. We'll be covering some really advanced things, right? Uh, we'll be covering some really advanced techniques along the way. I'll take you guys to be, uh, on this trading journey, right? As you can tell, you know, I'm rather young, right? But um, with the correct knowledge, with the correct guidance, you can become a profitable trader. That's one thing I'll assure you, right? Don't need 30 years learning the, you know, don't need 30 years in trading, right? I am, I'm 32 years old, okay? I'm very young. I'm very young, right? And I trade profitably full-time. Right, but it is because you know I've learned from the right. You no, know, I learned the right things. I learned the hard way, right? And I'm we have this partnership with Take New, where we're bringing you guys the good stuff, the juicy stuff, the stuff that will take your trading to the next level, right? Whereas um, um, we will have a VIP room soon for you. I'm gonna maybe maybe I can share this uh part with you. Um, I can I can let me see if I can share um. I'm going to share this new screen with you. This is the VIP room which will be coming soon. Um, there you go, guys. I'm not sure if you can see it, right? This will be VIP room. It is not, um, it's not public yet, but it'll be coming soon, right? In the VIP room, it's going to be pretty fun, okay? Guys, so stay tuned. I might, be, I might be releasing this VIP room next week. In this VIP room, maybe you're looking at, let's just say you're looking at dollar yen, okay? Um, no, no, it's not 50K. It's one, it's, we are having a promotion where it's just $1,000 to get it, right? So maybe uh, you're over here, you're the VIP, we're looking at this uh, dollar yen, and you're like, wow, you know, it's going up so, so much, right? And you wonder if this, if price has broken out of this level, you can come in here and you can say, hey, Desmond, right? Do you think price has broken this resistance? Which resistance are you referring to? You highlight this text, you click link object to text, and you can actually click this button over here, right? You click what you just drew, you confirm, and you send it through. So if I was reading this message for the first time, and I just hover my mouse over this, right? You can see that it, it lights up on my chart that I know this is the line that you were referring to, right? I can jump in a discussion and I can chat, you know, I can have a whole discussion if you are at this particular resistance level. I know it looks awesome, guys, right? And this is the training which we'll be providing you, hopefully in uh, by the end of this month, right? So all you need is a thousand dollars in your tick mill account, right? Do tune in because it's a it's 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 a it's a limited time promotion that we're gonna let you have access to guys like me, to my trading team, to my to tick mill analysts, right? You guys, uh, if you guys get in here, you can practice, practice, practice your analysis. It's not gonna just be theory where you learn. Right. Instead, it's not you can practice, you can learn, right? You can see that there's a we have an experience point system up here. So the more you participate, the more you rise up the ranks in trading, right? We have different ranks, you know, uh, to give you as you rise up in trading. We have different badges to give you, right? We got and it's gonna be very fun, right? Um, yes, it's available. Uh, the VIP room will be available for all traders, right? Um I can't share the link with you guys yet, right? Because I'm just giving you a glimpse of what is to come, right? Likely at the end of this month, right? We're getting it ready. You can see it's almost there. You know, you can look at all the different, you can jump to the different charts. You can jump to the different um, chat rooms and stuff. It's very fun, right? It's like, it's like Discord where we all can chat with each other. You can direct message me and stuff, right? It's something which is coming your way pretty soon, right? It takes me dedicated to, take, to bringing you guys to a next level of trading. Right, so it's not only just webinars that you watch us, you watch, but in between the webinars, when you're to practice, this is the place where you can come to to practice. You can ask your questions. You can practice your Fibonacci, your support resistance, everything else. 
right? Uh, I mean, if you guys want to follow me on um on Instagram, I have nothing much there, but you can check me out at Comfy Desmond. It's just me and my cat most of the time with my wife, <laughs> right? So yeah, go check it out if you want, right? But yeah, this is coming your way. Stay tuned, right? Uh, I might release it in our next webinar session. So yeah, stay tuned over there. I uh, hope to see you guys in the next webinar session. I know we have overran a little bit in today's session, but what I do want to let you guys know is that at Think Mill, yeah, we are completely dedicated to taking your trading to the next level, right? Hope to see you guys in two weeks' time, right? Um, yeah, I remember you guys, you guys see Amada, right? We got Phoebe, we got Alex, right? We got Aolin, right? It'll be a fun time. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Joseph, right? Um, just ping me on Telegram, right? My uh, ping me on Instagram. It's the same, it's the same username I have for Telegram if you want to reach out to me. Right. Otherwise, I will see you guys in two weeks. Right. Rizwan Sarki, thank you guys for tuning in. It has been a fun time. Thank you for staying all the way through. Right. Uh, look forward to I look forward to catching you guys in two weeks' time. All right. Thank you. Thank you for staying all the way through. Right. Um, no alien. Um, not yet. I will announce it probably in two weeks' time. Okay. It's not ready, it's not fully launched yet, but just give me a teaser on what is to come for Tick Mill VIP room. I know you guys are really excited about it. Right, but we are, you know, we're, we're just doing the finishing touches and then we'll release it to you guys uh, in the coming, either the end of this month or next month, all right? Thank you very much. You guys have been awesome, right? Cheers, peace out, trade safe, stay safe, and I'll catch you guys in two weeks, man. Take care, take care. Adios, bye-bye. Yeah. How do I end this webinar? <laughs> no idea. Okay, click on this. Where is it? Stop sharing. Adios, guys, take care. Thank you, Ray. Thank you, my panel. I'll see you guys next week.